at the camera. Nobody knows anyway. It makes no noise. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, I'm here at Germany at the Thoman Gearhead University, joined by the lovely Beat Thorne. What's up? How are you doing? I'm good, man. It's like such a pleasure to meet you. I love having you on my show. <laughs> I'm so happy that, that you're saying that. I'm so happy to be here because we actually uh, saw each other for the first time the other day on the bus at the airport on the way to the airplane. In Holland, actually, yeah. And I like fanned out and I was like, oh, God, David, it's, oh my God, because I'm such a fan, honestly. I love what you do. Oh, thanks. That means a lot because, man, be torn. I don't need to explain anything probably, but <laughs> check out his channel. He's an amazing player, did a lot of great work. I mean, you toured the world, did a lot of session jobs. I mean, could you maybe briefly describe your, yeah. your life as a work, just very short? Yeah, very short. I, I started off, um, mainly I've made my living as, as a touring musician. Yeah. Uh, I started that in the late 90s. And, uh, you know, sort of worked my way up from, you know, touring in vans and for very little money and stuff like that. And I was able to, fortunate enough to be able to play with some, some really great singers like Chris Cornell, Melissa Etheridge, and Don Hanley and some different people. So, but what has also happened in the last 10 years or so has been more of like working on my own thing, I guess. Oh. And that's through YouTube and also releasing a couple solo albums. Exactly. Um, and that's given me a, a whole kind of different career and a whole, di it's a very yeah. exciting to me, you know, yeah. to, uh, to not always be necessarily like having to, uh, to tour. In this video, we're using a Fender Blues Junior, which is a 15 watt single channel tube amp. This is how it sounds clean. Clean tube amp, a great platform for pedals. Yeah. But it's just one sound right now and we need more. Yeah, totally. it's interesting what you say, you know, it's like, um, it can be maybe like a case of option anxiety, I could imagine, for like a young guitar player today going, well, what do I get? Some, maybe some sort of drive pedal is, I think, uh, to lend a little bit of boost drive to the signal so that you can get a couple different shades and colors of, of tone, you know, beyond just the clean thing that you've got with an amplifier that makes like sense. this. Yeah, yeah, sure. So I see already there's one pedal on the board. Yeah, we picked the Soul Food. Yeah, we did. From EH, Electroharmonics. Um, this is a really uh, great thing to have. It's a versatile pedal. You can get overdrive with it, but you can also do a nice sort of cl clean but slightly colored boost oh, yeah. with this pedal. So when I play clean, people think it's clean, but actually it's almost always just a little bit overdriven. Yep. yep. Because it's just uh, a little bit of compression, yeah. a little bit of edge and color. It's, it's great. So Yeah. Then the guitar can respond um, to your picking dynamics and you lean into it and it'll clip a bit, oh. but you roll down a bit or maybe just pick light and it cleans up, right? It sounds like something you should let us experience. Yeah. Like, so the clean signal without uh, the soul food. If I was to play hard right now without the pedal, it's just gonna be kind of spiky, and, yeah. Yeah, but it's still relatively, you know, basically clean. You hit a note and it kind of, you hit it and there's a sharp attack and then it'll die quickly. Yeah, yeah. It's a cool thing, but it's like, what happens if you want a little bit of sustain or a little, you know, so. Shall we try it? Yes. Turning on the soul food. So it, it's just, it yeah. lends a fatness, you know, it's also doing something to the EQ, filling in the mids. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it and is, if, yeah. if you were playing in a band uh, with bass and drums going, you know, without it, your tone might disappear pretty quickly. You'd hear mm -hmm. the initials attack. Yeah. As things fade, it's gonna be hard to hear, you know, the, the guitar. Yeah. So you hit something like this, it's gonna make licks and stuff stand out more. <laughs> Clean. I love that. So yeah. when you mean when you say roll down, you actually mean like rolling down the volume knob on the guitar itself. Yeah, and this is yeah. a really important thing as as uh, you know, especially for younger guitar players to know is these controls are really powerful.
Well, aren't we actually also turning the amp up? I mean, we're hitting the, the tubes That's harder. Good. That's an excellent point. Yeah, are, so. so it's like a combination of, yeah. of the amp actually clipping a bit because we're pushing it harder and then all, also adding some of the grind here now with the drive up that yeah. high. From okay, the, yeah. so just one pedal, a lot of sound. So this is a first great choice for anyone who's looking for more out of one single amp. What do you think would a, a next pedal? to add to this sound. You know, but I love delay. I'm a huge fan of delay. So if I had an overdrive and a delay, that would actually be probably my main two things. If I could only have two pedals. Yeah, okay. So okay. why don't we go with that and add a yeah. delay now? So let me grab this one. Yep. I mean, this is a really classic. Digital delay by Boss, yep. DD7. So we're plugging it in after the overdrive, right? Yep. Just to make sure. Input A. Yeah, if you put it in front of an overdrive, it's gonna get really crazy sound. <laughs> Delay, generally speaking, this is the order where you should put it in. And run it after your drives. Exactly. Uh, and it'll uh, it'll keep the delay cleaner. Oh yeah. So the character of a digital delay is generally really clean. It gives you exactly what you put into it and just repeats it. Okay. And, and that's what we're hearing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I might tend to use a digital delay like that when maybe with the mix a little lower than it is right now, mm -hmm. so that's the blend of the delay. And maybe with the drive on and kind of a high drive setting, this might be something that I would use for a lead sound. Okay, that's when I would generally use a digital delay is for like kind of clean, like when I want a clean delay on the tails of my solos, okay. I, like, I like digital delay for that. Having said that, there's no hard and fast rules. Sometimes an analog delay on solos is great, you know, mm -hmm. or tape delay on solos is great. But when I think of like, especially with like high gain solos, yeah. you know, I might tend to use digital delay. But for this sound right now, kind of we got the soul food and it's kind of a lower gain thing and the, the, uh, the Tweety amp, it might be a little too clean for me. So I might be inclined yeah. to try maybe the analog or modulated setting. I agree, yeah. So you can yeah. instantly hear on the analog setting, it's much darker, the yeah. repeats are less defined. It's washed out. More washed out. Yeah, exactly, and, yeah. And so that's a nice vibe because it stays out of the way of the core tone. Like the, you know? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's Definition, darker, yeah. it floats behind the sound. Up more. It's rich, very rich. Yeah, yeah. It adds dimension to the sound. That's really cool. That is very interesting. Modulated. Now we have a vibrato on, yeah. the, on the delay repeats only. Oh, yeah. It sounds almost like a chorus effect too. Now we can get. Yeah, so this is a great thing to use in place of a chorus. Like you, sometimes you know, chorus is is it's such a distinct sound, and yeah. it's kind of it's, a, it's it's something that you might not need if you have a modulated delay. Yeah, and I feel that, uh, if you turn on the chorus, you lose some definition, and with this, you still keep the initial punch very clear. That's right, because it's exactly. clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got two pedals. We're doing great. I still am feeling satisfied, Pete. <laughs> let's throw in one more. Let's add something else. What yeah. are we, I think what we're missing here is a rhythm crunch. You'd want to put it, in my opinion, in between the soul food and the delay. Think of this as kind of your amplifier distortion, and think of this as what you would boost it with for solos. Oh, so this is the amp section, and this is like the input boost of the amp. Exactly, oh, exactly, exactly. So this is going to simulate kind of a crunchy amplifier a la, you know, like mid-70s Marshall or something like that. And then this can still be used as our solo boost going into that, and it's gonna be a, a cool combo. We added a sure ride. Yeah. So can you clean tone again? Oh yeah. Everything in the middle, let's turn it on. I'd like to point out about this too is what you want to do is set up your drives so that 
especially for this type of thing, that when you turn it on, the level doesn't go down. It should be about unity gain, which means like the same when you turn it on, if not a little bit boosted. And the reason is, think about when you turn on a distortion pedal, what happens in the music when you're in a band? Well, the drummers land into it harder because yep. it's now the chorus or whatever, yeah. and the singer sings a little louder. Okay, I always hear this. <laughs> and yeah. it's like you know, I recognize this. Yeah, you've <laughs> yeah. disappeared now in, yeah, the, yeah, in yeah. the track, right? So because when you listen to distortion, it sounds a little bit louder, but actually clean sound is perceived as much louder as distortion. Yeah. Because with distortion, the edges are cut off. So That's it's right, just, you're compressing it. Yeah, so you need to bump that, that, that level on the distortion. Yeah. Everybody's going to play louder, so you got to play a little louder too when it comes time to turn on a, a yeah. distortion pedal, generally Very speaking. interesting. Good tip. But what I like to do is have two pedals like we've got here. Very interesting, yeah. Yeah, gain a little lower on this guy for my rhythm. It cleans up with the guitar a little bit, and yeah. then you can nail it with something like the soul food for your solos. Stage one into gain stage two, creating number three. Exactly. <laughs> Now, you're not going to get a ton more volume when you turn on the soul food because what's happening is the riot is already compressing and distorting. Yeah. What you're going to get though is a mid-range hump. dies a little sooner with the riot. Yeah, you know, more so, sustained. It's br brilliant. Yeah, it's just I mean, three battles, man. This so much options. It's, so much options. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. So, um, one question I want to ask you: Do yeah. you give lessons? <laughs> <laughs> I, I want to take lessons from you, man. Uh, no. I do take lessons from you. I watch your videos. Uh, <laughs> I do. I do. Well, you're teaching me about sound. Very good. I've got a little bit extra to spend. I okay. want to have some more options. I mean, okay. Where do we go from here? Well, there's a couple different things we can do, but let's assume our amp didn't have a reverb. Yeah, you because know? our little amp has reverb built in, so I always turn it up just a little bit. Yeah. For the yeah. just mm, gooey yeah. goodness. For sure. But there are a lot of amps that just don't have reverb in there. Yeah. And yeah. that's actually, yeah. So let's add a reverb pedal. Yeah. So reverb, typically after or before re uh, delay. You know, there's no hard and fast rule there. I like it after. Me generally too. speaking. Me too. Yeah. Let's do that. So we added the marine layer reverb pedal. Can yeah. you give me the clean sound? Yeah. So it's very dry. Very dry. Very dry. So let's smack it on. Let's see what Ooh. A modulated reverb. Modulated. So a hall reverb actually simulates just a hall. Yeah, sound of a hall. Big yeah. hall and you play. So it just dies out quietly. There's room, which is a smaller hole. Yeah, so more tight. Yeah, more yeah. tight, shorter. And then there's special. Yeah. A bit more of a special effect. Mm. When you play these big stadiums, yeah, I mean, you did. Do you need reverb? There's this thing about playing in big rooms and not adding too much reverb because you're already playing in a room that's adding its own reverb, yeah, right? Yeah. And I agree with that. Like, if you're used to playing with reverb on all the time, just on your standard guitar sound, yeah. you might want to dial that back, back when you get playing big places. Okay, yeah. But if you're doing a special effect kind of thing, you know, I'm sort of going for something that sounds like Atmosphere or Pink Floyd or something. Part that you know that that uh, that really needs that you know you can't just dial back the reverb on that. So these are four pedals that will get you very far. I think so. You yeah, know, me too. the soul food uh, for your 
your clean boost slash overdrive stuff to kind of just gives you some more kick into the amp. You got the riot for your kind of crunchy rhythm stuff. You've got the delay to add some spaciousness and atmosphere and you know that type of mm -hmm. je ne sais quoi. And then the marine layer reverb for uh, you know to add so what you hear right now. It does really sound good. I mean, and this little amp works right for, for this tone, you know? And yeah. this could be all you need, really, you know? You got a yeah. whole bunch of colors there to play with. Um, I just wanted to uh, mention, too, a really important point that we were talking about earlier, you know? There's so much great gear out there, and you can always be on the quest for new sounds and adding new things to your, your arsenal and stuff like that to, to be able to be more creative and all that, right? But I do love the approach of Tom Morello, which is okay. that, you know, he assembled a, a simple rig back in the pre-Rage Against the Machine days, I think, of uh, a simple Marshall head, a PV-412 cabinet, and about five pedals. You know, he had a whammy, he had, a, a, I think, a, a DOD flanger or something like that. Okay. Uh, a boss delay, very similar to this one, I think. Maybe a couple more things, and he had one guitar. Yeah. And at some point, he spent some time just setting up all the knobs on the amp and setting up all the knobs on the pedals and tweaking the tones and getting it to sound as good as he could. And he said, I remember this in, a, in an interview that he did. He said it, it, didn't, it wasn't even like a great guitar sound. It was just like <laughs> a, the best that he could get out of what he had. Okay, and yeah. he said, that's it. That's my sound. You know, I'm going to stick with this. And this mm. is my sound. I'm not going to get on that train of always trying to, you know, like consumer buying things constantly. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. it's, 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 it is very easy to constantly have the feeling you need something. Exactly. And that's going to achieve something. something. I mean, all the greatest guy just needed their own stuff to get to the point where they were. And yeah. Maybe, I think um, it is easy to blame the gear instead of your own playing. Instead of that's a great <laughs> point. And and you mentioned to me earlier how important practice is over anything else. Yeah. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Definitely. and so to to that point, I think you know his his approach really because then he went on to do everything with Rage Against the Machine, and Audio Slave, and every I think he got one more guitar eventually or something. That's about it. <laughs> He, he used that same Marshall amp and PV cabinet and those same pedals, and he got so many tones out of that stuff and didn't get on that uh, that gear acquisition syndrome train of always buying yeah. things. Yeah. So I like to get new things. I love to get new toys. But it is loads of fun yeah. as a hobby, and I totally get it too. I'm, yeah, guilty. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. There's yeah, the make the most yeah. of what you have. You probably already have everything you, you, you might need. You know? It's a very interesting thing. So, yeah. All right, I think that's a wrap for today. I thank you Thanks, very, man. very much. I yeah. appreciate you showing me and all the guys on the internet some tips, um, some pedals, some great sounds, and of course, some great playing. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks so much, Paul. Appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Subscribe to Pete. Links in the description. And uh, thank you for watching. Have Thanks, everybody. Day. See you. Bye.